Good morning. It's great to be with you on this fifth Sunday of Easter, on this Mother's Day. I've got a, a, a little painting here that my daughter Emily had made for, for her mom for Christmas. And I uh, just I love it, and I thought I'd just have that and share that with you all this morning. But, but uh, my name is Bill Combs, and uh, I'm the rector at the Episcopal Church of Redeemer in Greensboro, Georgia, and it really is great to have you with us this morning. Our service begins, our morning prayer service begins on page two of the service bulletin that uh, hopefully you found on our website. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The, the Lord, Lord is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Now thank we all our God with heart and hands and voices who wondrous things hath done in whom his world rejoices who from our mother's arms hath blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love God, through all our life be near us, with ever joyful hearts, and blessed peace to cheer us, and keep us in His grace, and guide us when perplexed, when free us from God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and, and our, our mouth shall, shall proclaim your praise. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Jubilate, together. Be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. 
The psalm appointed this morning is that portion of Psalm 31 found in our service bulletin. I will be intoning it, or I'll be sure giving it a try, and you are invited to join with that or read along. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me. For you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant and in your loving kindness save me. A reading from the book of Acts. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. They dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, Receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Canticle 10, together. Seek, Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. found. Call, Call upon, upon him when he draws near. near. Let the wicked forsake their ways, and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord, and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens, and return not again, but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I have purposed, and prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, See, I am laying in, in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. 
but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Canticle 13 together. Glory, glory to, to God you, in the highest. Lord, well, excuse me. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven. Glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. A reading from the Gospel according to John. <coughs> Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself. So that where I am, there you may also be. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, but if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. <clears throat> this Easter season, we have been looking to our scriptures each week to describe an elephant. I'm sure you're all familiar with that fable from India about the six blind men who encounter an elephant and each comes away with a different conclusion about the elephant based on what it is that he feels. One feels a tail and says, oh, an elephant is a rope. Another feels the massive leg and says, oh, an elephant is a tree trunk. Yet another feels the, the ears of the elephant and says, oh, an elephant is a fan made of large palm leaves. And so it goes. None of the men are correct because they're only exposed to a fragment of the reality, and they wrongly base their understanding on something already known to them. Theirs is a failure of imagination and scope. Well, during these 50 days of the season of Easter, we have been encouraged to live into something that we might call resurrection life. This is our elephant, resurrection living. Each Sunday in this Easter season, we are given a fragment of what resurrection life might look like, and we are being invited to integrate these fragments to arrive at a reality. Our task differs from the situation with the elephant in this story. We are not sightless. We have been given the great vision of our scriptures through the holy works of 
of the book of Acts, the, the epistles, the gospels. Uh, resurrection life is carefully and precisely laid out for us. But we do have to be careful to not fall into the trap of the blind men in this story. To understand resurrection living, we need to harness our imagination. It might be wise to refrain from absolute comparisons with what we already know in the same way that the elephant is not a length of rope, but much, much more, so too resurrection living is going to exceed the limitations of any one description. On Easter morning, almost to well, maybe a little over a month now, we were told that resurrection living means that the resurrection is not limited to a future event alone, although that's an important part of it. Resurrection living yields new and abundant life in the here and now. Jesus doesn't go simply straight from the tomb up into heaven and then waits for his disciples to come and join him there. Rather, the risen Christ spends a lengthy period of time with his followers, inviting them into life with him in the glory of the resurrection. This was for them and for us an invitation into transformed living, involving an ongoing series of many deaths and many new lives in a, in a, in a, in a series of events. Now, three Sundays ago, Jesus, in confronting Thomas in his great doubt, showed us that belief is a marriage of the mind and the heart. Resurrection living weds the intellect and the spirit. The next Sunday, we walked with Jesus, Cleopas and his friend, learning that life is a path, a way we must choose, a way of light, a via lucius. And last Sunday, we heard Jesus describe himself as a gate into and out of a sheepfold, or, or as a good shepherd. We explored this resurrection life as a passage, as a becoming that invites us to constantly let go of what we might call death, of a way of living that uncreates God's kingdom, and living and taking up a life that is generative and creative. And this Sunday, this morning, we approach the elephant anew, with our reading from the first letter of Peter. Of all the epistles in the New Testament, this first letter of Peter's is among the most controversial. Was it actually Peter the Apostle who wrote this? Or maybe a later disciple of his writing in Peter's apostolic tradition? Is it a letter at all or is it a sermon? What does the author mean by writing from, quote, exile in Babylon? Well, most scholars do agree that this is a true letter and not a reworked sermon written to a people who are suffering from some form of persecution. It was likely written somewhere between 70 and 90 AD by a close follower of the Apostle Peter, although we really cannot rule out the possibility that Peter himself may have written this. The recipients of the letter were suffering not from persecution from Rome, but rather they were suffering from alienation in isolation from their Jewish brothers and sisters who did not believe the claims about Jesus. The letter was written from Rome, which at that time in letters of, from the Jewish people was frequently referred to as Babylon. Babylon. Babylon recalled to mind for the Jewish people their exile six centuries earlier. Hence Rome was a place of oppression, a place of alienation. This bit of background is helpful and important in our understanding of our reading this morning. Here, in the second chapter of this epistle, the Apostle writes to those suffering from ostracism and isolation. Come to him, Jesus, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight, and like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Living stones. I love that image, especially for a people who might feel alienated and out of step and out of connection with their community. Stones are broken pieces of earth. Stones are separate. Stones are fragmented. In regions that experience prolonged snow cover, at this time of year, in the May, after spring thaws have happened, farmers will find their pastures and fields dotted with stones large and small, as if 
In the heaving and shifting of freezing and thawing, the earth has given birth to miniatures of itself, stones. On their own, their fate is to become broken into smaller and smaller fragments with a succession of seasons until they once again are the stuff of humus and clay. But living stones, that's something altogether different. Resurrection living involves becoming living stones. That which was isolated and alone, dead and forsaken, becomes something altogether different. The Apostle echoes the words of ancient scripture that living stones build up. They become a part of something altogether different from and larger than they are in isolation in a field. Living stones tell an elephant's tale. In that part of Kentucky where my family lived for 40 years, my brother is still there now. But in that part of Kentucky, in central Kentucky, there are miles and miles of walls and fences made of limestone. Some of these walls are nearly 200 years old. Originally, they were made in the early 19th century by Irish stonemasons who later taught their craft to slaves working on tobacco farms. These stone walls represent a lot of things to a lot of different people. On the one hand, they represent the nadir of humanity, the lowest point, our capacity to enslave and dehumanize and crush the spirits of God's beloved children. On the other hand, these stone walls are beautiful works of art crafted by enslaved masters who overcame a death of sorts to create something lasting and remarkable. They're called dry stone walls. They're called dry stone because they do not have any mortar. This allows the wall to shift with the movements of the ground without breaking or cracking. If you were to study such a wall closely, you would find that there is a remarkable variety of stones, each with a particular purpose. There are large cornerstones and footing stones at the very bottom with smooth, straight sides and, and, and surfaces, the ones most prized by the master mason perhaps because they are so rare, and they also require a lot of work. There are also are what are called the coarse stones, long, flat stones laid down horizontally that make up much of the wall itself. There also are tie stones, walls that span, uh, stones that span the, the width of the wall and lie perpendicular to the coarse stones, adding additional strength. There are riser stones, large, vertical stones which add additional strength and beauty to the wall. And then finally, there are the capstones on the top, carefully, intricately shaped and squared to rest tightly together, securing the whole wall. But perhaps most important of all are the small pieces, what are called the shim stones, that fill in gaps and stabilize the larger stones. If any stone were removed, the wall would not last long. What holds this wall together is gravity and the fit of the stones, one to another. Such is what it means to be living stones. God creates us as unique and individual beings, birth of the stuff of life, the stuff of earth, and much, much more. We are, made, we are not made to be living in fragmentation, in isolation. And now in the midst of this pandemic, we feel this truth acutely. With or without the coronavirus, we are made to live resurrection lives as living stones, living in community, either in proximity or at distance, to build up in this world the spiritual walls that house and support God's love. The pandemic just means that we must harness ingenuity and imagination and intention in new ways. There will be no going back to normal. Everything is shifting. But we are dry stone walls and we move with that shift. Everything shifts with this exception. The relationship, the primacy of relationship with God. As living stones, living resurrection lives, this means that we will continue to seek to be in relationship with our brothers and sisters in every aspect of our lives, honoring who they are and whose they are, 
fitting together with them as best that we can, supporting and being supported. In this way, we create together the physical and virtual spiritual spaces that our world so desperately longs for. We create the space that shelters the spiritually weary and fractured. We line the paths that lead those who might be wandering to the one who loves them beyond all measure. We become the wall against which might grow the vine, the rose, the tomato plump with summer. And those who find peace and security and growth in that space will find themselves transformed, shaped to fit in their place amongst the other living stones. This is ours to become and to be. This elephant, this sacred body, this resurrection life. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed found on page 7. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Just a few moments, a few minutes of, of, of uh, announcements here. I, our, I think we've lost our Facebook. I'm not entirely sure, <laughs> but I'll continue on here and uh, and just again uh, welcome everyone to this uh, this service and and blessings on this Mother's Day. Hopefully, you are able to celebrate uh, in one form or another with uh, with those who brought us into this world. Um, uh, just a very brief word about the the bishops update that you've hopefully seen in our newsletter or in the bulletin here where the bishop has said basically that rather than having a set date for us to return to in-person services that we are going to continue doing what we're doing until further notice and this I think it provides great relief for some folks and great uh, consternation and, and anger even for other folks and I think both responses are perfectly understandable and uh, we were going to have an opportunity to talk about this as a community this upcoming Thursday at 11 o'clock. There'll be a Zoom conference and the information and, and how to join in on that is on our, um, is on the, in the newsletter. It's also in the bulletin here. Uh, so I commend that to you. I hope that you're able to join us. If for whatever reason you can't make it or Zoom is just not your thing or you don't want to talk about this in a public kind of way, please do get in touch with me. I am more than glad to talk with any of you and all of you about this as you would so desire. Uh, one last thing, and that's just that we have our coffee hour after this. Uh, this is another Zoom uh, conference for us beginning at uh, 10.30, and the information for joining in on that is also in the bulletin. There are also many wonderful, fantastic uh, announcements in the bulletin. I commend that to you and in the newsletter. Let's continue with the prayers. <clears throat> The Lord be with you, and also so with, with you. you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, in the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Suffrages be. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern, Govern and, and uphold, uphold them, them now and always. 
Day by day we bless you. We praise, praise your name forever and ever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have, have mercy, mercy on us, Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we, we put our, our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we, we shall never hope, hope in vain. The Collect of the Day. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And on this Mother's Day, we give thanks to you, O Lord, for the divine gift of motherhood in all of its diverse forms. We pray for all mothers present with us today. We pray for our own mothers, those living, and those who have died, for the mothers who loved us, and for those who fell short of loving us fully. We pray for all who hope to be mothers someday, and for those whose hope to have children has been frustrated. We pray for all mothers who have lost children, we pray for all women who have mothered others in any way. We pray for the earth that bore us and provides our sustenance. We pray this in all, all of this in the name of God, our great and loving creator. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Together. Lord, Lord, make, make us, us instruments of your peace. peace. Where there, there is, is hatred, let us so love. Where, where there, there is injury, injury pardon. Where, where there is discord, discord union. Where, where there is doubt, faith. Where there, there is despair, despair hope. Where, where there, there is darkness, darkness light. Where, where there is sadness, joy. Grant that, that we may not, not so much seek to be consoled as to console to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. I invite your prayers of intercession and petition, remembering especially Charlotte, Barb, Keith, Mark, Lindy, Rick, Helen, Jeff, Cheryl, Jane, Nettie, Danelle, Jenny, Audrey, Oliver, Cedric, Cherry, all those who are affected by the coronavirus, those on the Redeemer prayer list, and those we name either silently or aloud. For Elaine. For Ron and his family. Together, O oh God, heal them and make them whole. <coughs> I invite your prayers for the departed, remembering especially Corey Abel, son-in-law of Joe and Yvonne Jordan, and Joyce Van Ostel, mother of Cherry Salisbury. Also the now 280,000 plus who have died worldwide from COVID-19. Are there others? O oh God, may they shine with the light of your love in your heavenly kingdom. 
I invite your prayers of thanksgiving for all the blessings of this life. Remembering those who are celebrating the anniversary of their birth this week, especially Margie Forbes and John Cawthon, and those celebrating the anniversary of their marriage, especially Don and Gail Clary, Chris and Christy Harris, and Eddie and Lou Bird. O oh God, in the face of our challenges, we give you thanks. I invite your prayers for all else that may be on your heart. <clears throat> Together. Almighty, everlasting God, let our prayer in your sight be as incense, the lifting up of our hands as our sacrifice. Give us grace to behold you, present in your word and sacraments, and to recognize you in the lives of those around us. Stir up in us the flame of that love which burned in the heart of your Son as he bore his passion and let it burn in us to eternal life into the ages of ages. Amen. <clears throat> give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. And may you go forth and have a lovely and wonderful day until we do this again. Amen. <clears throat>